Here comes part two. Let's all hope it's better than part one. Holy shit, let's talk about the live show. Ivy came with us physically to Salem, to David Woodbeck's house. Um, we had done a modicum of preparation about what we wanted to do. He put his together in a totally different way than I did. I kind of wanted mine to be all about hotel stories. This is prior to the publication, uh, well, just prior to the publication of Misconnections, because I know that because we picked up the hardback copies in Portland after, right after the weekend of doing the live show. Um, but, so those hadn't really seen the light of day. I think some of them had been in either Merth and Dither or had been heard on the podcast. But that's how I arranged my part of the live show was uh, some of these longer pieces. Um, and lots of people got to read them. Trina actually read some when we actually did the live part. Um, I thought my part went off really rather well. Some, there was a couple of hiccups, but we just plowed through, and that's kind of how we did the live show. We just sort of got it going and play, plowed through. I, uh, you know, failed at music again. I hate that, but I finally learned my lesson that I don't, I'm not a musician. Uh, well, I don't have something to do with how drunk we all got, or at least how drunk I got. Fairly drunk. And by the time it was all over, we were all good and drunk, but we had really delivered on what it was we said we were going to do, which was do all of this stuff live in a basement on a hot August day in Salem, Oregon. Um, but all in all, nobody got arrested, nobody went to jail, so that's good, nobody went to the hospital, that's good. about this live show you're going to revisit this live show in a um in well a, the live show we've never done anything with the video footage when the show came out for the next we did what, it, what, what day what what um month was this show it was august it was two year anniversary august of 08 08 it was the three year anniversary you started the vanguard no no it was august of 07 07 August of 07, two year anniversary. Two year, oh right, two year anniversary. Because, yeah, I just finished the CD the first two years for that. And that was the handoff between me stopping and then IV and Daily taking it over. So we did that in August, and then the show got mixed down, and it was like it came out a week later. Um, but it was an edited version of the show. I had, since we did. There were three parts. I directed part one, Pat did part two, and I did part three. When we recorded part one, we played it all through. It was kind of just a rehearsal. Um, kind of wasn't so, but it was recorded. And uh, after we got done, people really wanted to do it again. Oh my God. Did we need to revisit that? Yeah. I don't know why she's giving me the stampede of people that are going to get any better. We're not going to get any better than that. We will. I think that's in the can. Oh, you're good. Hey, we're going to replace it all the time. They wanted to have another chance to make that first part better. You know, their performances or whatever. So we did it, and some parts were better, some weren't. Um, but it, it, then we got to Daly's part, we did it one time through, no rehearsal, no practice, and Ivy's part, same, no rehearsal, no practice, and a short conversation at the beginning of how it's going to go, and it's ran straight. So when I put the episode out, I took the part one and compiled what I thought was the strongest, fixed a few boogers or whatnot, but pretty band, but it was just audio. Now I've got the video, so I want to match the video and the audio up so people can actually see it, because it was... You know, down in a basement in a pretty small area. Um, it's kind of fun just to see all the off mic direction that was yeah. going on. And there's a bunch of footage of you know, setting up, tearing down, and fucking up playing music that never got anything done with. And that's going to be for the documentary. Yes. Now tell me, tell me a little bit about this documentary. I mean, documentary wanna. It's important to you to do this documentary. Well, yeah, because <laughs> what really pushes me a lot in these projects is how can I use up this footage? I mean, why well, I'm justifying carrying it around, so let me do something with it. Um, 
some of the books we put out, like Daily Second was, when you got all these stores, it's just the map. They're cluttering up our workspace, having all these unfinished things. And so the documentary for the live show is part of, let's finally use up this video footage for the way, you know, that it was recorded, um, and just get it behind me, because it's been on my mind that I had to do something with it. And I think it was such a boon after two years to get people to drive eight hours, to get everyone to free up a weekend, you know, three-day weekend of camping in Dave's backyard in Salem, and get everybody there in one spot to try to see if we can put on what we've been doing for two years live. Not, let's record a bit, pause, but we'll do the music live, and the people that aren't playing instruments will have speaking parts, we'll try to swap like why I need to talk here so somebody else has to play guitar and trying to do that and just tapes rolling go pretend there's an audience or pretend there's a big mic being broadcast yeah and it was more that you know I didn't you know we didn't know how we were going to fare when the pressure of it rolling and it got hot down there it was 97 degrees outside that day it was it was a miserable weekend weather wise um and just yeah, have a party and see if we can put a show out. And we did. And it came up pretty well, I thought. And uh, it's, I think something that people who were involved in it really reflect back on, it's kind of, you know, a peak of Loathe up to this point. Yeah. It was, you know, especially because uh, Loathe, to me, is, well, we you know... We worked up a couple months to it. We were building and very excited about the notion that when it actually happens, it's a big... You know, because I started right when, when school started, so yeah. went back to school after, what, 14 years, and starting this podcast every month, trying to figure out how that's going to work and study. So after two years of doing that, I wanted, the Loathcast wasn't challenging in a fun way anymore. I was really tired dealing with having to call people, come on, man, make that phone call, I need some content, or having to edit down 10-minute phone calls just to find the funny minute worth, you know? After the live show, then Ivy decided that he was going to take over the editing, and Chastain gave him the keys, literally, a, a big wad of keys that he had. It's more than a fancy title, you get the keys to Loathcast. And that was mildly successful then. And I said I didn't really want to take it over, but I would help. And we sort of did, and then we sort of fumbled, and then Chastain couldn't really stand that, so he took it back, so we didn't do a full season. So, my, uh, let's see, my favorite episode of Loathcast would probably be Animal. I like the animal one. We start drinking beers. Right about the fifth beer, we hear this thump, 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 you know, a big bass car coming down the road. We're like, oh, shit. It's coming real slow, and it stops right next to this freaking suitcase, and the guy jumps out of the back seat, and he grabs his suitcase, and he slings it into the back seat, jumps in the car, and they're gone. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, somebody just stole our suitcase, dude. And he's like, oh, shit. So we get in the truck, back out of the driveway, we get down the road, we got down the road about a half a mile, and here's this car flipped over in the frickin' ditch on the side of the road, and these four black guys are wandering around outside this car, all dazed and confused. And my buddy, he pulls over and he says, what's going on? And he said, some asshole put a mountain lion in a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> to help the suitcase that fucker with all around the camp. <laughs> I mean, loath to me is just this whole. I mean, there's the idea of community that that, that comes back, you know, and with you know, especially with these people who've been involved for a long time, you know, friends, but also within this this arena is this friendship, out maybe out, you know in and outside of it but it's also this idea of creating and sustaining this this other thing outside of yourself yes. you know 
that you know that it's for everybody. Right. right. It's but 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 they probably you know it's a semi co-op consumed. Yeah, exactly, and consumed by by mostly you know. Yeah, and that's why it's a co-op because it's basically you know you're putting out a product to be consumed by the people who created the product. Yes. You know, I mean, for the most part. Oh, totally. You know, I, early on, it's like, could be cool if other people were hearing it, and it became apparent, no, people aren't going to be, why should they? Yeah. Well, and, you let's know... Let's do it for ourselves, and let's get better at what we're doing. And and, and the hope is that, um, you know, well, eventually, you know, you, you would like you would like more people to... You know, especially with Daily's books or whatever, you know. Right. It's nice that it's on Amazon and that there's actually people who may have, you know, may have bought it, you know. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, it's... That's kind of a side. I mean, a, a nice if it happens. Oh, that's cool. But for... But the notion of bringing people together, creative people, to do something just for the sake of doing something creative, um, it's been in my mind since we started that in 92. Yeah. And so, 15 years of of just that mindset of thinking, like, and I don't know, I just really that's an intriguing idea. And all the existing community groups like that, you know, I, I tend to not like people that want to get involved with things like this. If that makes any sense, you know, like I'm not going to go to like writing workshops or yeah, okay, with yeah. strangers. Like, I mean, there's something that there has to be another connection prior not just have this be the connection I need to be the friend of them or somebody has to like them or I don't know it's yeah and it, it makes it a select club to get into really you know I mean it's it, right. in, in a way you know it is it is it is your kind of your chosen network of people yeah kind of I mean we, not just yours but you know daily and you know I mean right I don't know I mean and I don't know if we've ever excluded anybody. No, but you know what I mean, though. I mean, you. the idea is to give a stage for your friends. Wow, Uncle Kirk here. Hmm. Reminisce on that first encounter with the Loathe. Well, shit. Uh, I've known some of these cats for decades. You go back to uh, preschool. Hell. Before preschool, boil, whip back. That's a long time. But it wasn't until about, I don't know, four years ago or so, started hearing about this loathe cast thing. I didn't know what was going on back in the college days, per se, though I knew the fellas back then, even still. Again, boil, whip back, daily. But I didn't know what they were cooking up. Back there at old Schmeck College with the rag and the satirical things that they were dealing with, the student newspaper and the funny business with the money and all that. Till then, four years ago or so, and I started hearing from Regan and from Boyle, oh, there's this little funny business going on. We're doing these podcasts once in a while and every month and da 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 Oh, yeah, sounds funny. I don't want anything to do with it. But finally, after years and years of hearing about Mr. Chastain, the mystery man, kind of the wizard behind the curtain, what's going on all these years? Everybody assumed we'd met. No, we never had. But we finally had a good sit down at the Lawn Park, a little brew pub in Northwest Portland. I'm sure it's been in at least one, if not several, of the crawl Nichols, but that was when he laid it out. He said, here's what we're doing. Podcast. It's fun, silly, it's funny, serious, introspective, a lot of inside jokes, but mostly it's a platform for us to practice, for us to have some fun and, and let our creative sides out, do things. Mostly up to that point, it had been a lot of, you know, dailies, writings, and people reading them, and acting them out so I'm thinking about this okay arms twisted I'll bite sure whatever out and about driving around on a little crummy temp job I'd had that ended up lasting for three years over in southeast Portland I'm thinking hmm 
Jason said that the, the theme is it's a, it's a birthday, it's an annual, it's the, the first anniversary of this podcast. Loathe is the theme. It's like, ah, loathe, loathe, guys, what the hell? Yeah, what the fuck? I can't and then it came to me. Loathe, it sounds like loathe, you know, like bread loaves. I like to bake, and I come up with this nutty little bit, and I just kind of call into the love line and do a little riff on the phone. Hey, uh, yeah, um, this is Frank calling, and, uh, yeah, I met this guy at a bar last night, and he said I had to check out, he left me his card, said I had to check out this, this love line. There's this really cool love cat thing, I thought. Well, shit, I gotta call in on that because, like, I'm like the perfect guy to talk about loaves because, uh, like I said, I'm Frank and I'm the driver for uh, Ed Bread. And if anybody knows anything about loaves, it's Ed. He makes the best bread. Man, I wish you could. You gotta check out Ed's bread. Next thing you know, it becomes a little bit that uh, me and the Macker, who I roped into the damn thing, riff on a couple more times. I'm sure you might remember from a Christmas episode that came up either that year, if I remember, or maybe it was the year after that, but I think it was that first uh, Christmas after that, where uh, we had Ed from Ed's Bread, and uh, there was Jake of Jake's Cakes, and he had his fabulous fruit cakes that he did for Christmas. It was very funny. We are very excited to introduce exclusively for this month a good friend of ours, Jake's Fruit Cakes. I'll just let Jake tell you about his fruitcake. Jake? Hey! Hey, honeys, this is Jake from Jake's Fruitcakes. You know what I'm talking about. Oregon's best fruitcakes. I get my gooseberries, y'all, and I candy them, and I stick them in every cake I make, and you can take that to the bank. That's right, Ed's Breads had me come on. He's on that doggone low cast. He says... Uh, but that same day as I was roaming around, driving around, driving around, uh, the bicycle thing came on, uh, was, uh, queen, bicycle races, you know, bicycle, but, and I kind of broke a rule, and maybe that rule hadn't been laid down yet, but it probably was laid down soon thereafter as far as original content and music specifically is related, uh, but I managed to squeak in. Uh, on the radio over my loathe line call-in the bicycle race song from Queen and did this crazy rant about bicycles and how they're everywhere and what it's ridiculous it is yeah whatever it was stupid but because of course I love bicycles but you know it's all for art right doesn't matter where you like it or not Uh, uh. 
it was our first foray into uh, sound effects and production and writing and sending scripts back and forth and oh what do you think of this oh that's awesome okay that sucks okay fine here you rewrite that section okay my dialogue okay I'm going to do that and it was ultimately uh, a, a magical experience that, that uh, bonded us then for probably the next year and a half into doing at least one if not two uh, nutty set pieces of uh, radio theater for um, each and every episode based on the theme. Trying always to take something in the box, out of the box. It's pretty special. And I'll always treasure those times. That was fabulous. No, I miss not having that, that box to write and bust out of. So to all you loathers out there, keep writing outside the box. That's what keeps us sharp. We'll miss you, love. Peace. And but a lot of people, I mean, obviously it's something that, 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 you know, has become this really important, you know, important part of a lot of people's, you know, kind of... Well, the, when we started this, one of the things that it might even say in the little, uh, you know, whatever, our mission statement, that we just want to, we want to build a stage to allow our friends a place to come and play, to do their thing. You know, they've got a creative outlet. I mean, try on this, and maybe. <laughs> Oh, yep, it, yeah, here we go. Um, but the, the notion that are, that if somebody wants to put a poem together or draw a picture or whatever, we will give them a, an opportunity, a place to do that. You know, try to make it as easy as possible. Um, and that sometimes is, you know, bites us in the ass when stuff that you just don't, you know, feel best represents the efforts of somebody, or I don't know. It's a fine line. You have to make that determination of. Well, and it's a big responsibility. I mean, that, you're doing it again now, though. I mean, after giving it up for a year. Right, but it's also not the same. It's not not going to do monthly. The grind isn't there as much as now. I mean, right. as much at least. I mean, a month is up. I mean, we're talking about three months of the Halloween show and two months for the for what you have to prepare for, you know, the live show stuff. That's not a lot of time, you know? I mean, and doing it every month? Well, it started off being two 15-minute episodes, or parts, parts yeah. that went into. It was very half hour, half hour. Yeah, and then it gets to be longer because people want more, there's more people and they want more of their shit in yeah. there. And the more you have helps dilute the bad shit, but it also dilutes the great stuff. So you're just going to put it all in there and you fill your time and... Yeah, there's some good stuff, and there's some times where you're just appeasing. And that's, I mean, that's something that that people accept. I think. I mean, it's kind of. Yeah, I think so. I think how it has to be. Right. Everyone's get. I get. It's a stage open to all. I mean, but there's some good. I mean, I I actually was really entertained by the Halloween episode. <laughs> Scared you, man, didn't I? <laughs> you know I did. What? That ain't enough for you? This ain't scary enough for you? Well, man, stick around. This is Loadcast Halloween episode, and shit's gonna get a whole lot scarier in here really quick. Yeah, and so a lot of the, uh, the podcasts, though, and even the video is largely your taste. Yeah. I mean, it's people people give you this raw material and they trust you now to make that good choice to find that funny thing that they said and make them look good. I mean, it's an interesting dynamic between between you and and, and you know, the people who are Well then it turned into um, getting Idaho's or Boise's now sending stuff that is been edited some. They're starting to do some of the editing. Davelson stuff that's been from Salem has been edited. I mean, so Regan sends all his stuff in edited. So that part's good. People are like, oh, I should not be sending him garbage. Yeah, I think Ivy has said twice on that, you know, make Chastain listen to all this shit. Um, we get an editor, then we don't have to do that. We can just let it roll and make those huge files. Isn't Jason Chastain the editor? Aren't you? 
Aren't you the editor, Jason? <laughs> you can deal with all this crap, right? You get to wade through all this shit and sort out the diamonds from the... Shit? Shit, yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. All right, never mind. Yeah. Well, Screw great. you, Jason. <laughs> Spend your night or your weekend sitting in front of your computer listening to us ramble. I don't feel bad. Not at all. Not the least little bit. Maybe when I meet you, but not right now. <laughs> well, that part got better, you know, and people were getting comfortable with their software. But yeah, for a large part, I it is my style, my stuff that of what makes it on and the timing of it, and which isn't always agreeable to people. But, you know, I mean, at the same time, it's, you know, they're not doing the work either. Right. You know, they, you know, they kind of, it's what, and it, it's, it, it's a, it's an editor, you know, kind of contributor relationship, it's like, like many others, you know, you, you are, it's your responsibility to get it to well, the point where yeah, it's listenable or watchable. That I'm going to try to make it as, in my ears, as good as I can make it. I'm not going to intentionally embarrass somebody unless there's comedic value and it's not a cheap shot. Yeah. I mean, I'll re I'll play people doing bloopers, stuttering, stammering, because it's funny, you know? Yeah. Fucking up a call, like, ah, shit, fuck. Archived episodes. At last, we've been... Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Dave Whitbeck of... <clears throat> Try that again. And when I arrived, she proceeded to do a chat... I did. And when I arrived, she proceeded to attack the chocolate like a jackrabbit on a bobcat? What? What? A jackrabbit on a bobcat? I'm Dave Whitbeck of the great... One more time. Boy ain't been sleeping much. You ready? Whoo, dude, I'm gonna write this down and try it again. Kill the waste of spruce at the bottom of the page. No. Kill the waste of space at the bottom of the page. I'm Dave Whitbeck, and I sing, play acoustic twang box and harmonica for... Man, holy crap. I'm Dave Whitbeck, and I sing, play... Hmm. Last house on the left. Jesus, how many fucking times do I have to do this? Why won't it... Why is it not recording now? Oh, you know what that was? That was playing... But I really want to make people, you know, come across as you know, sometimes funnier than their content actually was. Yeah. Or tr I try to put a positive light on for sure. Because if I piss people off too much, they'll stop playing. They'll say, fuck this, I don't need this. Yeah. Hey, everybody, this is Owen. Just uh, going to wish everybody a uh, fond farewell. Uh, Exciting that we get a bonus episode of the Loathe Cast. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the first episode I was involved with. Um, it was a fight. Jason had me uh, come outside and smoke a cigarette with him and record uh, some very interesting uh, advice that he'd gotten off the internet about how to prevent different fights. One being, I, I remember uh, the dog is attacking you. You lick your thumb and plug it up his ass and uh, that will stop the dog from, from biting you so uh, the first of just many helpful helpful hints about how to live my life that uh, I've gotten from the loathe cast how to break up a dog fight make sure you're safe because as precious as your dog may be your life is also worth something not much but something look for something to separate the dogs a piece of cardboard net and be prepared to use it to separate them from you Try and use what you found to split the dogs. If you're in a room, try and run the other dog into the next room so as to shut the door on it. If you are not in a building, once you've separated the dogs, you can try to put one, yours particularly, in a car. Carry pepper spray and do not be afraid to use it. If the attacking dog already has his or her teeth in a locked bite, with your other hand pinch just behind the snout, the dog will open its mouth to breathe. Be quick and forceful. When the dog opens its mouth, pull back your dog and your hands quickly. Turn away and leave ASAP. If the dog bites you, do the same with your palm and pinch just behind the nostrils. 
the dog will open its mouth, pull away and leave. If necessary, grab the tail of the more aggressive dog and stick your thumb or finger into its anus. This will almost certainly make the dog release its bite without harming the dog. Also, you can grab the hind legs of the attacking dog and lift them up. You can then control the dog and keep it from attacking since you have its thrusters. Hello, this is Dave calling in from his kitchen. Hey, I just want to uh, take a little time here to reminisce about all the fun things on Loadcast. Uh, I've already done a little interview session with uh, Jason, but I really do want to comment on how much uh, the uh, live show still sticks in my mind as one of the more favorite things I've done uh, in this century. Uh, you guys are great. Creativity is uh, really inspiring and amazing, and I hope even with this Maybe fading away for a while, everyone still goes on to do their crazy art and keep themselves entertained because uh, if I can say one thing for sure, none of us are really boring. So let's just uh, keep on having fun and creating a new material and and I expect at some point we're all going to be in a room again doing this live one more time. Um, Once again, you guys are the best. This has been a really cool ride and I hope we can pick it up again someday. Dave out really enjoyed um, a lot of other people's stories, you know, and I think that's one thing that people are probably getting better at now, being more comfortable telling stories. Yes. And and telling them shorter and trying to get to the good stuff. And Well, yeah, they've heard themselves for the last couple of years. Or sometimes like, oh, rambling. <laughs> yeah, what am I saying? Why did he edit that out? <laughs> you know, and so I... And then again, also, you know, part of editing is where the content is not really being considered it's about filling time yeah or like this bit is great but I need to make it fit in this time frame so uh, cut 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 take out you know all the pause all the ums and or just a, a great passage like uh, this would have been great in the story but nope won't fit and there was another season to be had but I think that's you know, the point when uh, we'd all sort of spent our wad, I guess. We'd all sort of run out of things to do. By this time, I was in school full time, trying to, you know, get my bachelor's degree. Whitbeck was in school. Uh, Chastain was in school, but he had been in school for a little while and had sort of a rhythm going where he's more organized than the rest of us, but. Uh, and, you know, Ivy moved, moved a couple of times, you know, had another baby, but well, he didn't, his wife lived in, um, you know, life type stuff, started kind of catching up with it, you know. Um, God, it's been a great piece of connectivity, I'd say 20 years, man, it, uh, it's just been kind of a, a focal point for all of us, brings us all around into this common mission, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a long distance party once a month, it was just, uh, it was a hoot. Hello there, this is Bill Wagner, and as you know, I'm running for governor of Connecticut. I'd like to talk to you about my opponent, Regan Roberts. Regan has challenged my voting record publicly, saying that my campaign received funds from 15 dead rabbits. This is not true. Those rabbits were alive when we bought them. But Regan hasn't even voted in years. He can't pay a bill on time, and he has serious road rage issues. He cheated on a geometry test in high school, and he's cheated on his taxes, twice. Regan never goes to church, and he farts in crowded elevators. He also molested farm animals at a Christmas party in Fairbanks, Alaska, and he smells really bad. Don't let Regan Roberts become governor. He'll kill your pets when you're not looking. Paid for by the committee to see to it that Regan Roberts never becomes governor. Actually, a four-year run on an artistic endeavor like this, considering who we were and the, the route that we've gone, we, you know, we never made a pay. We never sought sponsorship, which, that's, I guess, lesson learned. We'll have to try to do that in future, and uh, you know, try to find a way to make something like this pay. Um, because this, this is the kind of stuff I want to do going forward. Now I work for TVC TV, Treasure Valley Community Television in Boise and the Treasure Valley. Um, 
community television, public access television, is like loathe plus. Uh, it's all TV. It's you know, do whatever you want. I imagine there will be a time when there's a uh, loathe video type show on our TV station. I'm the programmer. I get to choose what's on there, more or less. So maybe in the future, that's the next evolution. Next revolution? I don't know. But it would seem like a good time to end the loathe cast or end the what we're calling the load cast as it was. Maybe we move on to other things, maybe video. There's an idea of developing a television series or like a web-based, rea not reality series, but live action series with actors about maybe a student newspaper called Revolt. You know, an underground student newspaper called Revolt based out of, you know, a real, college newspaper room. So maybe reenact all of this load stuff. Um, write it, have actual actors act it, have actual directors direct it. We'll just be the producers. Would not mind going the route of uh, the sunny in Philadelphia people or the, the eastbound and down crew or the, uh, the way the trailer park boys got developed and made and marketed and several movies made not bad model so I can't think of anything else that brings you up to future that brings you up to the present and some ideas about the future so um, I can't say enough about the adventure of Loathcast it's been a grand time it really has been a fun experience a lot of fun to sort of brag about uh, we have several albums, books, t-shirts, you know, swag. I've got posters. I've got uh, lots of really cool stuff. A lot of it is, a lot, no, all of it is thanks to Jason Chastain. So he gets all of the credit. I'll say it a lot uh, again. Thank you, Jason Chastain, for all of your endeavors in Loathe, Loathe Cast, Loathe Megacorp, and all of the other subsidiary uh, entities. And here's hoping for more. So, Lovia. So, all right. Well, this has been a Love production. You can take that to the bank. And that was our dry run through. Everyone places. Let's do it again. Hey, hey, and the gang's all here, man. This is DG Wit, and I'm chiming in this time to tell you that we ain't even phoned this one in. This baby has been live. It's in the can. So speaking of live, boys, let's live it up. Two years. Thank you very much. Two years in the hole. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, man. This tiny outer space. Please visit us online at loathemegacorp.com. If you can't spell it, you can't visit. I'm going to miss it, but I'm not completely convinced that this thing's actually dead. Shafting keeps calling it dead, but what is this, uh, the third time we're burying this bitch? So I'm saying Loath is a zombie. It keeps coming. It keeps coming, and uh, when it does, I'll be old and wrinkly and gray, and I'm going to get uh, another weird phone call from Chastain, and I'll pick up my holographic camera, and we'll start doing it again. I bet you. It's five bucks. Come on, takers. Five bucks. Peace, load. Hello? Hello? Hey, Jason? Kirk here. Are you there? I need a couple more days is what I'm getting at. Uh, 
you know, I, I, I know, I know. Every time, I can never get anything in on time, but just this one last time, give me a couple more days, I can get something to you. Uh, you know, it's all about the content, right? We'll go again. 